The addition of the brand new mountain generation in Minecraft means there's a ton of new build opportunities, but since the landscape is so new, it can be difficult and sometimes a bit overwhelming to work out what to build there. So in this video, I'll be taking you step by step through a build guide for the new 1.18 mountains. You won't always spawn with the new mountains close by, so here's a few examples of great seeds that I've found that work on both Java and Bedrock. This fir seed has a huge meadow inside a circle of mountains. This would make a great location for a base, a village or even a large farming area. This next seed is a giant mountain range, filled with many peaks and rocky terrain. This would be great for mountain houses or even a cliffside village. And finally, this last seed is a mix of everything. You have the meadow and forest area in the middle, with many peaks surrounding it and large valleys too. Once you've found a seed, it's time to choose which mountain biome you'd like to build in. The new mountains have several sub-biomes within them. At the bottom, you have the meadow. This is similar to plains and suits just about any build. Up from this, you have the snowy slopes. This area really suits log cabins and is fairly easy to move around in. Just watch out for the powdered snow. This area can also be a grove, which has spruce trees in, just like this. And right at the top you have the peaks. These can be jagged peaks, frozen peaks or stony peaks. This area is great for mountain houses. Of course you can build in all of these biomes, but it's good to choose one to start with and then build out from there. Now that you've decided on a biome, it's always useful to think about some block palettes that you'd like to use for your builds. Since we're building in a very snowy area that's often home to spruce trees, I think that darker materials suit the area well. So, blocks like spruce, dark oak and deep slate work well here as they contrast well against the snow and make your build really stand out. You could also introduce a bit of colour by adding spruce leaves around your build, or even by using terracotta, copper or bricks here too. But if you do prefer lighter builds, you can always use spruce, oak and some stone variants. Just make sure that the stone doesn't completely blend into the rock face. If you're stuck and can't decide on a block palette, there's a great website called blockpalettes.com where you can scroll through hundreds of palettes and even filter by material to give you some ideas. Okay, so you've found a mountain, you've chosen a biome and you've got your block palette. Now it's time to start building. So here's a few build ideas to help you get started. The first example I'll be showing you is a mountain house, which is actually my starter house from my survival series. This is built up in the peaks on a flat surface. These kinds of builds make great starter houses as you only have to focus on the exterior of the front. For the interior, you can make it as big or as small as you'd like, and because you're building into a mountain, you can even add more floors and rooms that are hidden from view if you need to expand. For this build here, I've mainly used a mix of spruce and dark oak, but I have used some stone variants on the bottom floor. To make sure this doesn't blend in, I outlined it with spruce logs so you can see that it's part of the build. Now, if you don't have any land in front to walk out onto, you can always build a deck area with some supports underneath just like this. To get up and down, you can simply add a ladder on the side of the mountain, or if you'd prefer to have this hidden, you can have the ladder leading up inside the mountain or even use a water elevator too. And that's the first build example. You could build several of these on different peaks and join them together with bridges if you'd like to. Now, for the second example, I'll be building a log cabin on the snowy slopes. So, to build in this area, try to find a spot with some flat land, or you could flatten it yourself if you need to. For this build, I'm using a lot of wood, again, spruce and dark oak, to make it really stand out against the snow. I think log cabins look great in the snowy slopes as it reminds me a bit of a ski lodge, and also looks nice and cosy with all of the snow surrounding it. This kind of build will be a little bit more challenging than the mountain house, as you have a full exterior and roof to build, but it can also make a good starter house. If you're after something a bit bigger though, you could recreate a build like this on a much larger scale and make a big wooden lodge, which would look great here. Now, because we are on the snowy slopes, the surrounding area does look a bit empty, so a really easy way to decorate here is to just plant some spruce trees like this. And because of the powdered snow, it's a good idea to add a path leading up to your house too. I've made this one out of deep slate, but you could use any material you'd like. And that's the log cabin completed. 
You could build several of these and connect them with paths to create a village, or even build on a much larger scale if you want to expand. For the next example, I'm back up in the peaks where I've built a hanging house. Now, this build is quite tricky and is more something that you'd build if you wanted to show off your skills a bit, compared to something like a mountain house that's fairly simple to build. So, to get started with this build, you'll need to find a side of the mountain that's quite high up with enough room below to be able to hang a house from. For this type of build, it's important that you have a solid beam at the top with some support below to make it look like it's holding the house. To begin building this, you'll have to start with the roof and then work your way down. This will be quite tricky to do in survival, but it's definitely possible if you use scaffolding, dirt blocks or even make use of water elevators. Again, I've used a mix of spruce and dark oak here to make it really stand out against the stone and the snow. But to add some colour, I've also included some spruce leaf blocks around the sides and hung some lanterns from the roof. The entrance into this house is from a ladder coming down from the beam at the top and through the roof, so it would be best to have a hidden way up and down inside the mountain leading up to the beam if you want to have the illusion that the house is hanging in the air. And for the final example, I'm going to create a farming area in the meadows. Since the meadows are so green and full of grass and flowers, it makes sense to use this area for farming if you also want to build higher up in the mountains too. The land may need a little bit of terraforming before you get started, but for farmland it looks nice if you fill the area with crops, keeping the land at different levels to make it look more natural. So here I'm just building a small windmill at the top of the hill using a mix of deep slate, spruce and dark oak. But since the meadow's much more colourful than the top of the mountains, a lot of different and lighter materials would also work well here, like oak and the stone variants. Some other builds that you could include in your farming area are a barn for animals, a stable for horses, various animal pens, a well, maybe a storage barn, a chicken coop, and for the rest of the area you could just fill it in with fields of crops to make it look more complete. As you can see here, I'm adding a path leading down from the windmill and then I'm making some crop fields on either side in front of this to fill in the space. The normal dirt paths look great in this area as it blends in well and feels very natural. You can also add in some oak or spruce slabs for steps too, so you don't have to jump up the blocks. If you want to expand your farm area, you can add more paths leading off it in different directions to other builds to make the area feel more complete and lived in. As you can see from this example, sometimes the meadow area can be huge, so feel free to build anything you like in here. You could stick to a farming area, or you could even fit an entire village in here, it's up to you. Now, to bring everything together, the final step is to connect the areas to make it easier for you to travel around and find where everything is. The easiest way to do this in the meadows and snowy slopes is to build paths coming from your builds to connect to wherever you need to go. If it gets a bit steep, you can also add some staircases in too, then carry on the path at the bottom. Now, if you've built in the peaks and want a way to join your builds together, then a hanging bridge like this would be a great option. This kind of bridge would be great to join various mountain houses together or could even just be used to fill in gaps like we have here to make it easier for you to walk around. And finally, if you need to cover a much larger gap, like a valley, you could build a large railway bridge to help take you across quickly. This would be quite a large project but it does look great once it's done. You could also use a rail system to take you around the mountains through a series of tunnels and smaller bridges too. And that's everything you need to know about building in the new Wanda 18 mountains. Thank you so much for watching, I really hope you've enjoyed the video and found it useful. If you have then please leave a like and if you're new here please consider subscribing too to see more content like this. And feel free to leave any feedback or requests in the comment section below.